John Hartnett mentioned it, something a minute ago about relationships and about how important relationships are in Silicon Valley. And I, and I want to talk about how we can help make that happen. Because I think for, for most of us, our currency now is our relationships. Um, I like to tell the story. Um, last, last summer, my 19-year-old uh, daughter had, had an internship at, um, we live in San Francisco, she had an internship at Craigslist. And you all know Craigslist. And um, she invited me to have lunch with um, her boss. And uh, it was this uh, downtown San Francisco restaurant. So my 19-year-old uh, daughter, Megan, is having lunch. And um, she's having lunch with Craig. And, uh, and on the other side of her is Mark Zuckerberg from Facebook. And she's talking and being animated. Of course, they're not that much older than she is. Um, but I thought to myself, you know, I am not sure that that lunch happens in a lot of other places. Mm -hmm. And I thought to myself also, you know, Megan, do you know who you were having lunch with? Just, yeah, Craig and Mark. <laughs> and um, so it's that, that little vignette is, is about how things happen. And, and my question to, to the panel is, um, Craig and Mark are probably not going to be having lunch a lot in the pub upstairs. So how do we make those, how do we generate those relationships? How do we get that flywheel going so that the relationships which are so important <coughs> develop here? John? So I'm going to pretend I'm a politician for a moment and ignore your question <laughs> <laughs> and, and answer the question also that you asked Craig. Give okay. my two cents on that. Okay. <laughs> what can the Irish diaspora do for Ireland? Yes. And uh, so first I want to just um, expand on a little bit of the work that uh, John Hartnett has done that hasn't been discussed much here this morning. As well as the ITLG, John has also set up the Irish Innovation Center in San Jose, California, in a piece of property owned by Tom McHenry here. And uh, the purpose of the center is to be an, in an incubator for young companies founded by Irish men and women who have, um, and, and uh, the center will provide not only space at very reasonable prices to have their offices and do their R&D, but um, legal aid um, for, their, for the uh, contracts that they may get involved in, um, access to good patent attorneys, access to venture capital, the whole nine yards. So this is a tremendous, um, in my view, uh, idea, and I'm very proud to be associated with that. Um, I am an engineer by nature, and so therefore I tend to look for solutions to problems. Um, I give some thought to what uh, the diaspora could do, very specifically, and here's one suggestion, just one of many. Um, I think everybody realizes that the coming budget is going to be pretty damn draconian. And one of the things I have heard is that um, there is likely to be an increase in the registration fees for students going to universities. Even though Ireland has a, a system of scholarships for those who reach a certain level of uh, accomplishment uh, at the, inter at the um, leaving certificate level, there are many students left behind by virtue of the fact that they cannot afford the books, the, the, uh, uh, the uh, digs and so on and so forth associated with a four-year stay in university, or their families can't afford um, for them not to go out and get a job and help uh, keep the family going. Some friends I know uh, set up a system in their hometown some years back whereby they provided a, a series of scholarships for students who were in that particular situation. And uh, the, the uh, presidents of the various two or three, I think it was, uh, high schools in that town were given the job of selecting a group of students every year who um, had all of the necessary qualifications to do well at university, um, but simply could not afford to go for reasons that had to do with their family's uh, inability to pay for them. Uh, so these people set up a scholarship program. And now I believe it's got some 60 students going through college, various colleges throughout America. And uh, it crossed my mind that um, if one was to approach the Irish diaspora has enormous goodwill toward Ireland for a variety of reasons, having to do with happy memories of childhood, uh, stories from their grandparents, etc., etc. The wonderful art and music and history of the country. It crossed my mind that um, if one was to approach the diaspora directly, perhaps using the various research, uh, online research tools we have right now, 
and invite them as individuals to sponsor a student in the hometown that they came from or their father or their grandmother came from to send him or her to university, sort of a no mind left behind, if you will, approach. That would be something worthwhile doing because on, on, unless we make the maximum use um, of the brain power here, uh, there will not be enough perhaps to uh, start companies going and, and build the kind of infrastructure we're hoping to build. So as I said, it's my nature to look for solutions and this is one that I think would work. And I hope to persuade uh, Dr. Barry here to perhaps allow it to reside in his university. That's a really good idea. You know, I won't answer your question either. <laughs> <laughs> but kind of. I think it's important to look up at the banner up over my head or wherever, and the big companies that are listed up there are absolutely key contacts. Mm -hmm. There are Irish folks in those big companies. You've got several of them on the board of ITLG. Uh, those companies are vehicles to bring ideas into the market. They're not, not necessarily to start the company, but to help the company succeed. And you, you, you've got an Intel exec here and one over here someplace. And Intel Capital is the biggest high-tech venture capital company in the world. I just saw in my little Intel news blurb this morning that Intel Capital just announced $77 million of investments in 18 companies in 11 countries yesterday. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's a vehicle to take an idea out of an Irish university and to help it prosper. And those are contacts that are here. They're accessible. I mean, you can grab the guy today or the gal today and you have their email address and if you got an idea, they can shuttle you into Intel Capital or Cisco or Microsoft or any of those major corporations. That's an absolute vehicle that's, I think, underused. And the reason I'm saying it's underused, as I quickly read through my memo this morning and the $77 million that Intel Cap invested in, I looked for Ireland in the 11 countries listed. Guys weren't there. And in case you're feeling bad that Ireland is blacklisted because of your financial conditions when they're investing in the Ukraine and Russia and places which are difficult to do business in and Ireland's easy to do business in, we're not making maximum use of that. And that's, that's an area where those direct contacts can help, ITLG can help, but that's the vehicle to get going. Can I add to the run of people that are not answering your question? I, 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 I lost <laughs> One of the first things I did actually when I went to the University of California was uh, write a training grant with the novel notion of getting our students to actually do internships in industry. Uh, it was soundly rejected by the uh, uh, research committee saying, what does she think we are, a voc ed college? <laughs> and now it is the biggest training program within the university system. And what professors are finding is the students that go out into industry learn a whole lot more than they're learning in their labs. They come back with really good skills. Some of them come back spoiled. They're expected people to make their buffers and media for them. But most of them come back with incredible entrepreneurial notions of what they could do. They initially are forming these contacts with the companies, but they're also getting ideas for spinning off their own companies. And we've spun off about 10 or 12 companies from those students who would probably have just wandered along on the academic route. Not that there's anything wrong with wandering <laughs> along on the academic route, but they would <coughs> never have even thought of thinking outside of the box. And I think that's something that we can help the <coughs> universities here to get those type of connections going. And we're very, very happy. And in fact, I've had students from Ireland come over to the US and get them to work as interns in US uh, biotech companies. So I think there's a lot of potential for those type of connections. Well, we're mm. going to open this up to questions mm. in, in just a few minutes. Um, and you're all sort of answering my question, <laughs> even though you don't know it, uh, about relationships and about being aggressive about about developing those relationships. Tom, were, were you going to add? No, I, I was just going to say, as, as he, he often does, J John Ryan just eloquently expressed in, in his understated way why I'm involved with the ITLG and why I have a continuing interest in Ireland. Um, 
it's the old, it's the old uh, Samuel Beckett advice to the young director who had screwed up one of his plays that uh, I think we've all heard this story repeated in different ways. The young director was distraught and Beckett said, just fail better, my boy, just, just <laughs> fail better. And that really is, is, is the lesson of Silicon Valley and the lesson that we, we hope to give a, a piece of through people associated with this group. You know, the, the, another elephant, I guess there's a lot of elephants in the room, but uh, being a recovering politician myself and having many friends in Linster House, I can say this, uh, they have to act and make decisions. In the best of times, government should do that. In a crisis, it's absolutely necessary. And are they out of money? Government at every level, in California, Arizona, everywhere, is always out of money, unless they have those certain areas where they take whatever funds they have and channel it. And they have to take the funds that they have and channel it into education, entrepreneurship, and partnerships with people in the diaspora that they believe in. It might not work, but then fail better.